Good morning, Magadang Umaga. Let me first greet you collectively, dear friends of International Law of the Sea. I am delighted and honored to be with you today as Ambassador of the French Republic, but also as member of the European Union. As our eminent speakers already pointed out, the stakes couldn't be higher when it comes to upholding a rule-based order in South China Sea. As increasing tensions become the new normal, the risk of uncontrolled escalation with regional or even global repercussions cannot be underestimated. When it comes to these issues, France shares with the Philippines a non-confrontational approach firmly anchored in the respect of international law and multilateralism. In that regard, the 2016 Arbitral Award sent to the world a powerful message for which we must thank the Philippines. It became a building block of a reaffirmed rule-based international order that we all benefit from. Unfortunately, as the news regularly shows, we cannot take the prevalence of the rule of law for granted. It is being challenged in many ways, and it undermines our long-term collective peace and prosperity. As a maritime nation, a blue nation, nation of the Pacific, the Indo-Pacific, with two million French people living in its, in its overseas territories, and the second world war, worldwide economic, um, exclusive economic zone, France shares similar concern with the Philippines when it comes to upholding its sovereign rights, for example, in the area of illegal fishing. This is why our commitment in the region is hardwired into our shared interests, as our own interests overlap with our like-minded partners. Our unwavering support to the 2016 Arbitral Award is a testament to this, as reflected in our regular statements. Each time we need, and we do, react to the situation in the South China Sea. This is why we have been more actively involved in defense and security partnerships in the Asia-Pacific, Indo-Pacific region, in addition to promoting multilateralism and political dialogue in all relevant fora. In 2022, France was admitted as an observer in the ADMMM Plus experts groups. We are fully committed to contribute to a free, open, and inclusive Indo-Pacific together with the Philippines and other ASEAN and like-minded partners. Six years ago, 2018, the launch of a French Indo-Pacific strategy underlined a new holistic approach to our interests in the region. Defense of sovereignty, global commons, and economy are the main pillars of this strategy, all meant to be supported by political dialogue, multilateralism, and again, strict adherence to the rule of law. In that regard, the 2016 award is remarkable as it completely addresses all these issues. Name a few. Declaring the nine dash line contrary to, contrary to the young clause, it confirms both mischief reef and second Thomas Shoal form part of the exclusive economic zone and continental shelf of the Philippines. It condemns the 2012 mor moratorium on fishing in the South China Sea falling within the Philippine EEZ and upholds the right of Filipino fishermen to engage in traditional fishing in Scarborough Shoal. It points out the failure to prevent Chinese fishing vessels engaging in harmful harvesting activities of endangered species at Scarborough Shoal, Second Thomas Shoal, and other features in the Spradley Islands, including through island building. More importantly, perhaps, it points out the total disregard of good seamanship and neglect in any precaution regarding the international regulations for preventing collisions at sea. Daily news keep on reminding us these issues only worsened since then, requiring increased vigilance and resources from all like-minded partners. In this context, France made a clear choice to signific significantly step up its bilateral relation with the Philippines. The recent launch of Blue Nation initiatives reflects our Indo-Pacific strategy diversified approach in the maritime domain. We are working closely with the Philippines, our Philippine authorities to prepare the 2025 United Nations Ocean Conference that will be held in Nice next June. As the 2016 award pointed out, environment protection and the upholding of sovereignty 
are the two sides of the same token and benefit from each other. In that regard, undoubtedly, the Philippines are a first-rate witness the world should hear more about. The development of our defense cooperation perhaps best show the reinforced mutual trust between our two countries, stemming from the decision of both President Macron and President Marcos to strengthen our strategic partnership. Accordingly, the Minister of Armed Forces, Sébastien Lecornu, came for an official visit last December 2023. It is telling to recall that it was, in fact, the very first visit of a French Minister of Armed Forces in the country, here in the Philippines. Together with Secretary Theodoro, a letter of intent was signed to design the way to, stronger, for, to a stronger defense partnership in all areas of strategic training, industrial domains, etc. This letter of intent knows quite a high speed in, it, in the implementation process. Announced by Minister Le Cornu in December, a resident defense mission opened just last June 17. It is headed by our defense attaché, Captain Stefan Litzler, who is with us today. This guarantees that, we'll, that we will bring even further our joint endeavors in the defense domain that are already more and more substantial. This will also be of utmost on the way back to negotiate utmost, utmost importance, sorry, to, on the way to negotiating our visiting forces agreement as both ministers agreed in December. Now that the spectacular negotiation with Japan has come to the impressive result we saw last week, congratulations on that, we are working very hard to be one of the countries next in line. This year, France served for the first time as an active participant in the bilateral maritime Balikatan exercise through the participation of the Fregate Vendémiaire. A few, e few weeks later, the French Navy's Bretagne destroyer made a port call in Manila and at the end of the, the current month, month of July, the Pegas mission will stop over in the Philippines for the very first time with the deployment of a French air and space force contingent. contingent. This will strengthen our joint commitment to uphold the freedom of navigation and overflight, essential to keep an open and inclusive Indo-Pacific region. These operational activities result from more regular interactions between our authorities. In terms of those uh, French operational activity, let me mention that the Philippines ranked third in the Southeast Asia region this year for us. This is a remarkable change that shows how much Paris has been paying more and more attention to the geopolitical trends around here and the unique position of the Philippines in that regard. The partnership between France and the Philippines, two maritime blue nations of the Pacific region, who share the values of democracy, the rule of law, and promote multilateralism and international law is stronger and stronger, and you can count on us. Thank you so much, Mahaming Salamat Prof.